Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of You're Wrong and Here's Why. I'm Chris Forwardell, joined by Greg Crone. Gregory, how are you? Not too bad, Chris. How about yourself? Uh, you know, I'm doing good. I wish everyone was privy to the conversation we had prior to the <laughs> recording here. Because it, really, it would really color the how are you doing questions for both of us. But uh, basically, I'm a wuss and, and Greg does what he has to do is, is what we, we learned from this. <laughs> What are you going to do? Other, you know, other than that uh, sort of emasculating uh, realization, I'm doing all right. Yeah, I mean, let's just put it to, to everybody. I am not a fan of snow, and Chris can't deal with, like, light rain. Look, I didn't say I can't deal with light rain. I said, <laughs> I, I would, I said, no, okay. I probably have a backup recording going, so I never said I can't deal with light rain. Excuse me. Never said that. I said I don't care for light rain. I live in, which isn't that much better in reality. I, I live in Northern California here at the underdog offices. And uh, yeah, we, we pay a lot of money to have the sky outside be blue and the temperatures be pleasant. And we're we're very firmly into the rainy season here in California. People say like, oh, look, it, it never rains. I would argue that once the rain starts, it really doesn't let up until it just stops again for eight months. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that. Um, I'd prefer the rainy season to the, hey, let's wake up and it's just randomly I have to go de-ice my car every morning season. Vinegar, Gregory. Vinegar. Is that a thing? Yes, yeah, that works. This is, a, this is a legitimate tip here. You have to, you want to water it down just a little bit because you don't want to get, you know, you don't wanna, it's corrosive on potentially on the paint. But it works incredibly well. You spray vinegar on your windshields and your uh, and your uh, windows. It, it it is a lifesaver. Seriously, huh. try it. Try it next time. You're going to be thrilled. Or you I'm watch gonna... you, you watch YouTube videos. You'll see how how it works. Well, that's how I change all. That's how I do anything with my car. Is YouTube. Me videos, too. So it it wouldn't be the first time. Can you? It's such a strange era that we live in. I remember. Back 10 million years ago when I was in school, like the early grade schools, and, and just had to use an encyclopedia. We had to go to the library, get an encyclopedia, and that's how we found out about things. Now you just Google, like, how do I use vinegar to clean my windshields on YouTube on your phone? Yeah. And uh, a, a, a world of information is available to you. It's crazy. It is the best resource of all time. It shows you exactly what you need to do and walks you right through it. So when both of your taillights go out inexplicably for the second time in three years, oh boy, you know how to replace them. Taillights aren't hard. Yeah, I think I probably YouTube taillights as well, as well as how to change my air filter in my current car. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, use, useful tool for sure. And thank you, Al Gore, for bringing the internet to all of us. <laughs> Um, we've got some great topics to talk about today. We're going to talk about why the Garrett Cole contract is going to backfire on the Yankees in the long run, why uh, Odell Beckham Jr.'s best move is to remain with the Browns, and why Antonio Brown has talked him out, himself out of another shot in the uh, National Football League. Gregory, uh, I noticed today while I was checking out Bavada Sportsbook that the Yankees are the odds-on favorite to win the World Series. Tell me why this move is going to backfire on them. Really, it comes down to how much do you want to invest in a guy, especially at a position like a starting pitcher, you know, in those mid to late 30 years. I mean, yeah, sure, you're going to get the prime of Garrett Cole over the next, what, three to four years? Mm -hmm. But when you look at that back half of the contract, you know, this is running all the way until he's, what, 38 years old? That last year is 37 years old, and he's getting paid $36 million a year? A bargain. Sure, yeah. That mix Did I just win? This, Did I just win? I don't think so. That mix with that Stanton contract yeah. it really sort of handcuffs the Yankees spending and their ability and and the problem is is their the, the way their fan base reacts if they don't win next year they're going to expect to buy the next big free agent for for 2021. Like that's how this sure. is going to work. But because you have upwards of, you know, $600 million tied up to two guys over the next decade, that's a serious problem. That You're not, you're not going to keep spending. I don't care how much the franchise is worth. I don't care how much money they have. At a certain point, they're just, 
you can't financially responsibly do that. Sure, does it get them a World Series potentially this year or next year or even three years down the line? It might, but the back half of this contract is going to look very, very rough 10 years from now. Well, first of all, it's only a nine-year contract, Gregory. Sure. So uh, not even worried about that 10th year. The Yankees are off the hook in that 10th year. But, uh, you know, the argument I would make is, first of all, Garrett Cole is, if not the best, one of the best pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. And that is one of the most valuable commodities in any sports today. This deal, it, it's it's crazy, but is it really all that crazy? $36 million, like, I would rather spend $36 million a season on Garrett Cole than $35 million a season on Strasburg, which uh, we saw the Nationals do just the day before that. Jeez. Cole, right. Cole Cole is 6.8 war guy last week uh, last year 20 and 5 with a 2.5 ERA and a 1 or pardon me a 0.8 whip just utterly dominant numbers for the uh, the Newport Beach California native shocked that he's going to be uh, in 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 Manhattan rather than uh, Southern California next year. This guy he's a game changer. You put Garrett Cole on the mound especially with especially with the kind of offense that the Yankees have, minus Didi Gregorius. Thanks, Joe Girardi. And uh, you expect to win baseball games. He's going to win a ton of games if he stays, assuming he stays healthy, and you know that can be said about any player in any sport. Assuming Garrett Cole stays healthy, this guy is going to win close to 20 games next year. And maybe the, maybe the uh, ERA jumps a little bit. But even if so, if you're looking at a guy who, like a 2.6 ERA and a one whip, this is still dominating starting pitcher numbers. And Cole's not a guy who I think his stuff is going to age particularly poorly. I, I could see him being very valuable and a, a positive force well into the contract. I mean, yeah, sure, it's certainly a possibility. But you can't tell me this is going to be the consistent, the consistent you know, production from a guy like this heading into years... You know, age 35, 36, 37, and he's still owed, you know, upwards of $108 million at that point. I don't know. You know, we watch guys break down time and time again. I mean, look, think about the end of Roy Halladay's career, right, with the Phillies, just as a comparison. I mean, those last few years, and that was age, you know, you're talking 35, 36, that's not that's not that many years away, and obviously a little bit of a different scenario, injured shoulder, things like that. But that happens with guys, especially guys that eat innings. And Cole throws a lot of pitches. He's primarily a strikeout guy. I mean, I think there over the summer, when you talk about baseball prop betting, Cole was almost a lock every single start for for his uh, strikeout over, no matter what they set it at. The guy had du- would just produce double-digit strikeout game after double-digit strikeout game. He's throwing a lot of pitches. There's definitely a lot of wear and tear. Uh, I mean, that's the thing that would concern me the most if I'm a Yankees fan, that that breakdown comes sooner rather than later. With that money, I mean, sure, do what you want. The Yankees are going to Yankee, I guess, is is sure. the way you're going to look at it. But uh, it's it's a lot to ask for out of any sort of starting pitching. And it's the same thing with Strasburg. Strasburg is... Another very similar case. I, baseball contracts are just absolutely insane right now. The the one and only thing that I would be worried about if I were the Yankees is there's always been some talk that maybe the Astros are finagling things a little bit with their starting pitching. Maybe uh, maybe cheating a little bit in terms of a uh, couple of different ways. You know, increased spin velocity is one of the big things. It seems like guys get to Houston. And regardless if they are 22, 25, or 39, they have among their best seasons of their career. You know, that could just be pitching, coaching, and uh, and proper use. But to go, look, when I, I look at these peripherals, you're talking about strikeouts per nine with Cole. He goes 8.7 in 2017 with Pittsburgh to 12.4 strikeouts per nine in 2018 with Houston. And that jumps to 13.8 strikeouts per nine in 2019 this past season, while he's only walking, by the way, two batters a game, uh, the lowest of his career other than the 2015 season, striking out 6.79 batters per walk, utterly dominating numbers. If you're not a cynic, you have to believe that Cole has figured things out, he's harnessed his stuff, and there's no reason to think this is going to change anytime soon. 
The only thing I'm not as worried about in this situation when you talk about, you know, guys go to the Astros and all of a sudden they're just like the best of their career. Charlie Morton? Is, well, there's that, but uh, um, the the 2015 year that Cole had with Pittsburgh, really the one that kind of yeah. upped, his, upped his stock. I mean, the guy had a 2.6 ERA in 32 starts, 19 and 8 with the Pirates. Like, he, he certainly had the ability. Then, obviously, the strikeout numbers – we're only at 8.7 in the strikeouts per nine or whatever. But, I mean, it's it's tough for me to think that 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 was just a fluke in Pittsburgh and then all of a sudden he went to the Astros and they're like, here, here's what you got to do. We hold a string that holds the guy's bat back when, he, when you throw a pitch. Like, well, are, are you at all concerned about the fact that a guy who has only had a sub-3 ERA three times in his career, 20 in – 2015, 27, 2018, and 2019 is now getting the richest contract in baseball history? I mean, sure. Uh, if I'm a Yankees fan, I'm yeah. definitely a little bit concerned, uh, which is sort of where my point my point comes in about this this eventually backfiring in the long run. Uh, I, I don't – I'm not going to sit here and just hate on them forever, but it's, it's certainly it, – it certainly makes you wonder kind of – how how good do you really have to be to get some of these ridiculous contracts that are being dished out? You know what I mean? Well, it's opportunistic too. We yeah. know we know how free agency works. the The best player in any given free agent class uh, is likely to be the highest paid player, be it uh, position or pitcher. When it's all said and done, that's that's just how things go. We've got Mookie Betts coming up in a couple of years, and guys like that. There, you know, he's going to be the highest paid player in baseball. He'll he will surpass Bryce. He will surpass uh, Arenado. And by the way, Arenado is available. How? Oh, I saw that report today. Speaking of uh, how difficult it is to work under the uh, uh, under the, the the limitations of these giant contracts. Yeah, Arenado available one year after signing one of the biggest deals in baseball history. Uh, you know, Rendon's going to get a very similar deal, and it's going to be tough for teams to compete. Ironically, a team that sort of hasn't learned their lesson, it looks like Rendon could end up with the Rangers, who did everything humanly possible to get out of that Derek or that Alex Rodriguez contract they signed so many years ago. Yeah, I, I will say one thing right now about baseball, though, is I am so happy people are signing before like oh, Christmas. Sure. Yeah, this is. Three this months like, earlier than Bryce Harper yeah. signed. I mean, this is like music to my ears. I don't have to sit and stare at, at random MLB beat writers. Um, <laughs> Not Twitter. that you won't. I mean, I'm sure I will, depending on what goes on. Um, but I mean, this is this has been this has been amazing with the flurry of signings that have happened in the last week or so. Uh, you really can't beat that. Uh, the Arenado thing's interesting, but I also th- I also saw stuff today. You know, obviously the Chris Bryant trade market sort of mm-hmm. heating up, which is interesting. I don't really know what the Cubs are necessarily doing. I, I, there was also a report today that they they haven't even approached Anthony Rizzo with a contract extension, uh, or even like talks about a contract extension. Um, I'm not sure what their plan well, is currently. I think the relationship between Bryant and the Cubs is going south quickly. There's that service time uh, issue that has been sort of a noose hanging around the neck of a, of that relationship boat for a couple of years now. It was, you know, one of those situations where the Cubs, within their rights, mind you, I think it's stupid, but within their rights, kept Bryant down, like, the first month and a half of yeah. the season so that he'd, he'd have three years of uh, whatever it is, minimum ARB before the, the final, well, I guess minimum salaries before the two years of ARB. But I, I think he's probably going to end up winning that, and that that's going to be a monkey wrench for whoever does acquire him. I think Philly's going to be interested. I think, you know, the Nationals is certainly interested, especially if they aren't able to uh, maintain any of the current players and can't grab a Josh Donaldson or somebody like that as a replacement. It's it's going to be interesting to watch. Um, you know, one last point I wanted to make about this, though. We have to consider inflation when we talk about contracts like this, especially long-term contracts like this. You know, with a continued rise in the salary cap, <coughs> come on, cough, cough button, Gregory, cough button. I went with, to hit it and I hit the volume up button by accident. <laughs> with the uh, continued rise in the salary cap and all of that, 
you know, 36 million is not going to be 36 million in five years, six years, seven years. We're going to have, I don't know, who are are our our superstar young pitchers right now? When the Walker Buellers of the world hit free agency and got baseball stupid, like five years, he's going to, you know, probably get 45 or 50. And that's just how how sports works. Where is baseball getting this money, though, is my thing. People apparently go. I guess that's not what that's not what the internet tells me. Well, the internet has never lied once. And by the way, this show is on the internet, so that holds true. <laughs> I don't know, but you know I'm right. You know that I know, con- I know, contracts I know right, continually cause... jump, 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 jump. Yeah, it's well, it's the same. It, I think it's the same in every sport. It just seems like it's so significant of a leap every time in baseball. Um, like if you think about football, anytime the next quarterback who's up is mm-hmm. you know whose yeah. deal is up they always become the highest paid quarterback of all time and the, the next one guaranteed. is pat mahomes yeah well that's gonna be well deserved is my guess but um it, i just uh, but those i see that league and i see that league having a ton of revenue and i see that league having insane popularity whereas baseball had the lowest rated game seven of all time two months ago you know what i mean I, it's yeah. I, it's I know I, you're right, and I know this is a while ago, but I remember being a very young kid and uh, being excited about the Phillies signing Greg Jeffries, and everyone was just saying, "Oh my God, this is too too much money, too much money! How can they give Greg Jeffries this much money?" Greg Jeffries signed a four year, twenty million dollar contract. I mean, he was raking it in back then, Chris. That would you know that is I don't know four years. 150 million in today's market easily it, yeah it's just it's it's a completely different game it's just a completely different game and uh it's going to continue to be so and they, as long as garrett cole doesn't suffer a catastrophic injury he's going to be worth it to the yankees in the long run i don't know about all that i all think right. that this i think that this handcuffs them going forward the expectation from their fan base and all you've seen every the last three years when they get knocked out of the playoffs, the expectation immediately jumps to, we need the best player available. It happened with Cole after mm-hmm. this year's uh, postseason. Um, it happened with Harper the year before. Like it, these, the fan bases are sit there, or that fan base in particular sits there and and just sits on you know whoever that number one free agent is. And let's not even mention the guys they have to re-sign that are already on their team. You're talking about Aaron Judge, who's eventually going to need a contract. You're talking about a guy like Glaber Torres, who they constantly remind you is only like, I don't know, 22 years old or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. He's going to need a new contract in, in in short order. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts here that, that this this type of financial, you know, obligation to, to Cole and then also Stanton. That is the part I think that plays into this a lot. It's really going to kind of handcuff them going forward. Judge won't be a free agent until 2023, and uh, and Torres will be an unrestricted free agent in 2025. So I don't think anything is really imminent with uh, with those two guys. It's coming sooner rather than later, Chris. It's well into the future, Gregory. We're going to be in phase <laughs> six of the MCU at that point, and uh, that oh, seems God. like a, a million years away. You love superheroes. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> 